Hi everyone at St. Olives. Hope you're managing with the lockdown. Now into day 10, we hopefully only have 11 to go. I'm sure some of us, depending on our circumstances, are feeling frustrated and claustrophobic, lonely, anxious, fearful. Somehow it's always worse at night than during the day. Anxiety levels are higher at night. And yet, as many have pointed out, it's also become a time to recharge our batteries, to be quiet, to think, to read, uh, to pray, to reorder our priorities, and to concentrate on what really matters, which are our family and loved ones, and of course our relationship with God. There's more time to read, and to pray, and to reassess our lives. Somebody said to me, who's been using the St. Olaf Bible reading scheme, that they've managed to read through all the chapters uh, all the way through to the end of June. So let's use the time to pray and to read. Of course, the events leading to the lockdown all happened very, very quickly indeed. Within a week, our lives were completely changed and different and priorities rearranged. What a difference a week makes. Today is Palm Sunday. Let's consider for a moment a week in the earthly life of Jesus. From Palm Sunday to Easter Sunday, Palm Sunday to Easter Day, and with Good Friday in between, from pu public acknowledgement to a terrible betrayal, from a shameful death on the cross to a joyful resurrection from the dead on the Sunday. And so as the Christian calendar goes, we travel with Jesus from Palm Sunday to Monday Thursday to Good Friday and to Easter Sunday. We journey with him to Gethsemane and to his trials and interrogation from the cross to the empty tomb. And each year that we do that, we are challenging, are challenged to answer for ourselves the question asked in Palm Sunday in Matthew's Gospel, chapter 21 and verse 10. And the question is, who is this? Who is Jesus Christ? And what, what am I to make of him? As Jesus rode into Jerusalem on a donkey for the last time, he was greeted by a large crowd who at this time welcomed him into Jerusalem with shouts of Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. That is taken from Matthew chapter 21 and verse 9. They saw him as a prophet from Galilee. They had heard his stories. They had seen his miracles. They threw down their cloaks. They cut down the palm branches and they cried out, Hosanna. It's thought that during the Passover, there were upwards of 100,000 pilgrims in Jerusalem. They came from all parts of Israel and from all parts of the Mediterranean area as well. These visitors to Jerusalem especially would have been intrigued by a man riding on a donkey surrounded by a noisy crowd and so they asked who is this there are three answers given in Matthew to that question number one who is this Jesus was a prophet that's in verse 11 of chapter 21 the one who was promised of God the one who fulfills scripture as verse point verse 4 of chapter 21 points out that th this took place to fulfill what was spoken by the prophet in Isaiah chapter 62 and verse 11. Number two, who is this? Jesus was the son of David. We see that in verses 9 and 15 of Matthew 21. He came as David's greatest son. And so three times the crowd cries out, Hosanna to the son of David. Now Hosanna means, Lord, please save. Lord, save now and then finally point three who is this jesus is the healer we see in verse 14 that jesus heals a blind man and so ordinary people are amazed and marveled at the compassion and the power of jesus but sadly we see in verse 15 the response of others who were critical indeed hostile towards what he was doing verse 15 tells us that they were indignant to the cries of the poor and that and what jesus was doing from them and so as we begin what traditionally 
in the church has been known as Holy Week, remembered this year during a time that none of us has ever experienced before in our lifetimes. It's a time of shaking and upheaval and fear of the future and unpredictability. But during such a time as this, let's recommit ourselves to Jesus, who is our anchor and only hope. In the quietness which has now been enforced upon us, may we each, each of us ask the question, what do I make of Jesus Christ and what is my relationship to him? When on Monday, Thursday, we recall that Christ has died, Christ is risen, and Christ will come again. When on Good Friday, we remember his death, he died for my sin in my place. And when on Easter Sunday, we celebrate his resurrection, he conquered death, and he rose again. And so let's pause briefly for prayer. Dear Lord, all authority is yours, but you have given authority to leaders to protect and guide us. And today we ask that you would give all our leaders wisdom, discernment, strength and resolve at this time. Please keep them healthy, safe and rested so that they can continue to guide us through this tr troubling time. Give our government leaders wisdom about what needs to be done to stop this virus. And we pray, Lord, that you will stabilize our economy. Give our medical leaders insight into how to stop the virus. Strengthen their resolve and honor their hard work in creating a treatment for COVID-19. And please keep them safe as they look after others. And help us as leaders in our communities, each of us, Lord, to display courage and hope and generosity and kindness. And in Jesus' name we ask it. Amen. And then finally, uh, several of you have contacted me and asked me via phone and WhatsApp concerning financial giving to St. Olaf during this time when we are unable to meet together. I thank you for your awareness and concern for the financial stability of St. Olaf Church. The best way to give is through an EFT payment directly into the St. Olive bank account and thank you for many who've made arrangements to do so. If you are able to get to a bank, they will help you to, do, to make such a payment and we are able to go to banks and do our banking. And as we all know, our children are good at technology and so I'm sure one of them will be able to help you. God bless each and every one of you. And we look forward to the day when we can all meet together in our sanctuary in St. Thomas Road. And thank you very much for listening. And God bless you all.